For far too long, humankind has been blinded by an archaic notion, dating back to the 15th century, that we all live upon a round globe like fleas on an egg, spinning in the vast outskirts of space. Fortunately, modern research has uncovered a growing body of evidence that the world we live on, in fact, is flat. Let us examine the data. The brightest minds, making use of advanced technological equipment like the lodestone, have conducted investigations into the ether. Their discoveries have been recognized by the United Nations, which has adopted the Zetetic model on its flag. Note that the world is a round disk, surrounded by the great wall of ice known as Antarctica. Every morning, the proof of the Earth's true form rises before you in the light of dawn. If the Earth were a ball, the sun would always be shining upon a part of it, and it would never be dark. Speaking of dark, some tape-headed fools would have you believe that the stars are all millions of suns just like the one that goes around the Earth. But if that were the case, surely the ether would have combusted a long time ago, and we would be nothing but a burned-out cinder. Of course, the most compelling evidence of a flat world is the existence of volcanoes. Above our square and stationary Earth, the sun rises, passes overhead, and sets. At night, the sun passes beneath us, and herein lies the proof. As anyone who has ever observed a candle will note, the flame leaps upward. So great is the heat of our sun that it leaps upward through the flat disk of the Earth and erupts in the flaming spire of molten rock that we call a volcano. Who, I ask you, who would ever dispute the mighty word of Krakatoa? or Vesuvius. If you need further proof, look to the great holes left behind by these flaming solar penetrations. Every year, air airplanes and ships are consumed by these openings, vanishing off the earth to fall forever through the abyss. These are exciting times we live in, when we're on the verge of all kinds of revolutionary breakthroughs. Next time, we'll discuss the spontaneous generation of geese through the transformation of barnacles. But before we go, I've got one more thing to say to you. April Fools! Please don't revoke my teaching credential until you take a look at your calendar.